Hey everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Thursday, December 14th. Hope you're doing awesome. And in this video, we're going to dive into IIPR. We're gonna take a look at the technicals. I'll give my thoughts and opinions on the chart, what to expect in terms of price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. As always, this isn't financial advice though. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only, and you should never ever buy anything based on anything that I say or anything that I write. So we did have a monthly uptrend that confirmed, and this is exactly what we wanna see across the whole space. We wanna see multiple producers in the US do it. We wanna see all the producers in Canada, ETFs, retailers. The more names that confirm monthly uptrends, the better. And we also had another major bullish signal that flashed as well, which we'll discuss all of that and more. But before we get to it, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me and the channel. And it doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe. Take the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any, any future videos or whenever I go live. I actually don't hold IIPR in my MJ portfolio, full disclosure. Let me know in the comments below if you hold it or if you think I should consider adding it to my portfolio. I think it's a safe bet, but it's not one of the ones that you know has always really stood out to me. I think there's better risk versus reward out there, but it definitely is a safe bet, right? Uh, so again, I, I may look to add it to my portfolio, but with all the reform that's coming, uh, they're kind of business model thrives on the fact that you know these companies can't get lending and access to traditional capital right so the fact that you know we're going to have potential reform you know rescheduling we could see safer we could see uplisting in the nice and the nasdaq i think a lot of that is gonna you know really kind of be a thing of the past and then we'll see how that affects iipr stock but curious what everybody thinks in the comment section below uh, but again let me know if you think i should consider adding that to my MJ portfolio. And if you haven't seen my MJ portfolio, I do a top five and then I did another entire video of my entire MJ portfolio with percentage breakdown. It's a little uh, old at this point, so I'm gonna try to do a new one here at some point soon. But before we get to the technicals, you can also give us a follow over on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow, and we recently signed up for Rumble and Odyssey as well. So like I said, IIPR, monthly uptrend confirmed. We'll take a look at that in a moment. but. We'll take a look at the hourly time frame. So there is a bullish continuation pattern on deck into tomorrow. We closed at the high of the last hourly candle and we started the hourly bounce. So we had a brief hourly consolidation period and a potential for a bull flag here. So we're in a nice uptrend here on the hourly time frame. And then if you take the FIB tool from the low to the high, anything over the 0.32 FIB on this consolidation was a potential for a for a bull flag on the hourly time frame, which is a bullish continuation pattern. And as you can see, we didn't even get down to the 0.236 there at 96.53. We had a very, very brief hourly consolidation. Consolidation just means we're pulling back and losing the low of the previous candle. And we actually had two hourly consolidation bars in a row. Very, very brief consolidation. And then we started the hourly bounce. When we were bouncing, that just means we're breaking the high of the previous candle. So when we started this consolidation, anything over 94.92 was a potential bull flag. In order to negate this, I'll give you the bull and bear scenarios. In order to negate this, in order to invalidate this bull flag, we would need to lose 94.92, which is the 0.382 FIB. And then in order to confirm it, we need to break resistance here at the high of the bounce at 99.11. And then obviously 100 psychological is gonna be very, very strong resistance as well, but we'll see if bulls can cut through it like butter. Uh, it's looking like it may be the case. And if we take the low to the high here and get our measured move. You can see here we're targeting about 106.76. So if we break 99.11, bull flag confirmed, and then we can expect a measured move of 106.76, which just from that breaking would be another upside of about just under 8%. So if we zoom out to the daily time frame, one thing to be cautious of, we do have a gap there now, which is the high of yesterday at 93.64. And we are running extremely hot here in terms of RSI. We're extremely overbought anything over 70 is considered overbought and we're pushing 80 so there's still there still could be some room left in the tank uh, here to run a little bit more like i said that hourly bull flag could mark a potential blow off top but we have to be very very cautious on this name if you're looking at entries now um, if you're thinking about taking profit obviously i'm not going to tell you to buy sell or hold but may not be a bad idea to lock in some profit if that's your plan if your plan wasn't to lock in profit and sell anytime soon then forget i said anything but if you're in a day trade or something like that where you're contemplating whether or not I should take some profit might be a good idea to start locking some of that in because we have no daily support really all the way down to 78.10, which from current levels, that's about a 21% drop from here, just under 21%. So something, something that I wanted to bring up here as well is the most important thing is the monthly timeframe. So what I've been saying for months now is I wanna see 
multiple MJ names, not just, you know, Canadian names, not just Canadian producers, not just MSOs and US producers. We want to see all producers. We want to see all ETFs and retailers and other, you know, different, like I, I have, well, different business models, right? They don't really actually touch the plant. They, they're more of a, a REIT, right? So, uh, you know, all of these, they're still technically considered, you know, part of the industry. So the more names, the more, you know, sectors within the sector, right? The more we see retailers, the more we see ETFs, pretty much ETFs are the big thing because it tracks all of the, the major companies, right? So as long as we have, you know, the US ETFs, the Canadian ETFs that are confirming monthly uptrends, the more confident we are in a multi-year bear market ending and a potential multi-year bull market starting. And IIPR is following in the footsteps of the Cure Leafs of the world and the AYRs of the world. So if we take a look at Cure, uh, Cura, which just uplisted to the NYSC, or sorry, the uh, TSX, NYSC and NASDAQ is next potentially. Um, if we get safe banking, safer banking, we get uplisting the NYSE and the NASDAQ, that'll be next. But Cure Leaf, I was wondering why they weren't on my watch list there. But I just remembered that they're on the TSX now. So, and we don't have the history here. So we'll have to bring up the OTC name. So if we bring up OTC, you can see here we have our low, high, higher low, and higher high. We confirmed a monthly uptrend back in September, whereas IIPR is just doing it now. And then if we take a look at AYR, same deal, low, high, higher low and higher high, forming another higher low, starting the monthly bounce, looking for another higher high. So like I said, this is looking really, really good. IIPR just confirmed its monthly uptrend this month. So we had our low of the dump, high of the bounce, higher low, and higher high. So this month we broke our high of the bounce here at 87.81. Once 87.81 was broken, monthly uptrend confirmed. And we could still see an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross as well which would mean a ton of upside from here. But in terms of resistance, we have 114.61 as the next level to be watching. And that's gonna be a very, very strong level of resistance. Obviously 100 psychological, but if we can confirm that hourly bull flag, get over it, target that 106 area. And then we have a lack of resistance until about 114.61 after 100 psychological. And if we just get rid of this extra fib tool here, you can see here that also lines up with the 0.236. And then after that, we have the 0.32 retracement at 133. And then the 50% retracement would be at 155.56. So the fact that we're confirming a monthly uptrend is great. And we could potentially expect lots of upside from here. And it looks like the bottom could be in for a long, long time. And like I said, the fact that it's confirming monthly uptrend is great but we do have very strong resistance coming up there at 114.61. And the reason why I believe that is very, very strong resistance as well is because we also have the 200 weekly there at 119.95. So if you're wondering when this thing's gonna to top out, I would say it's gonna be somewhere in between that, you know, 106 to 119 area. And then it's more than likely going to pull back in a significant way, but it'll just be healthy, right? It, nothing goes in a straight line up or down forever but we're blasting off going absolutely parabolic here on the MACD and the stochastic well above the 10-week moving average we also had a golden cross with the 50-day moving average coming up crossing the 200-day moving average the last time that happened we'll just inspect this here last time that happened price went from about 73 bucks all the way up to 250 and then we had a death cross with the 50 above the 200-day moving average when that crossed price went from about 167 all the way down to 60. now we're seeing another golden cross here but keep in mind that I've been saying this for a while now as well as you know most people when they start learning technicals any kind of analysis they realize they learn what a golden cross is and a death cross and a head and shoulders and an inverse head and shoulders so usually when we see a golden cross it doesn't mean we're going to the moon tomorrow right it could be multiple weeks from now it could be multiple months from now and often what we usually see is one final shakeout before a massive breakout and that's basically what we got here till rate did a similar thing where we had a golden cross and then we came back down, had a death cross, and then I think we're getting that final shakeout before the massive breakout. So IIPR is looking really, really good here, but it could be a few weeks, could be a couple of months here before we really start to see massive upside. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised in the least if we saw a pretty big pullback here. If we see that hourly bull flag target of around 106 and we get pretty extended uh, on multiple time frames, like I said, on the daily time frame, we're getting very, very over heated in terms of RSI, but the weekly, we're not yet weekly overbought. So watch weekly overbought. RSI is currently at 68. So 70 and above is considered overbought. When the weekly RSI gets into the 
uh, upper 70s, that's when we're more than likely going to pull back in my opinion. So like I said, that 106 to 119 area should be a good target for a top. And if you're looking to maybe even short it, that might be a, a good shot, a short opportunity as well. And then, like I said, when we do top out, we'll more than likely at least come back, form this, fill this gap right here at uh, 93.64. So even if we just pulled back from current levels to that resist or to that previous resistance, which could act as new support, that'd be about a correction of a little over 5%. But ultimately, I think we could pull back to our EMAs for a healthy daily higher low. And we could start daily consolidation over the next couple of days, in my opinion. Could even have a daily inside bar tomorrow, but it'll be all dependent on that hourly bull flag. Like I said, we'll see if bulls can really, you know, kind of gain that momentum right out of the gate tomorrow once the bell rings. But like I said, wouldn't be surprised if we pulled back anywhere from 10 to 15% while we search for a daily higher low. So like I said, when we do start to pull back, no major red flags, we'll just be scouting a higher low. It'll be healthy. We'll cool off RSIs. And then we'll look for another potential leg up after we form a healthy daily higher low. So like I said, it's looking really, really good here at the moment. And this is exactly what we want to see, right? We want to see multiple names confirm multiple uptrends. And this is a very convincing uptrend. We have our low, like I said, our high, higher low, whoops, and higher high. And then, like I said, could still see that EMA 12 and 26 bull cross. But keep in mind, the, the EMAs are quite far away from each other. So it's more than likely going to be a couple of months, in my opinion, before we see those cross. And I'm in the camp of thinking that we're going to more than likely get a DEA response to HHS's recommendation. I think they'll approve it. Uh, but I'm in the camp of thinking we'll probably get rescheduling news at some point. Not actual full-blown rescheduling, but we'll get some news leading up to it being rescheduled. And then I think it'll get rescheduled probably later on toward the end of the year, maybe you know between April and, and the summer. Um, but like I said, I think in Q1, Q2, we're going to get some updates with regards to rescheduling, and I think it's going to be positive. And this lines up as well with that monthly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross. A lot of people were saying that IIPR is one of the best performing stocks over the last few months. Uh, realistically, we just confirmed a monthly uptrend this month. Cureleaf did it back in September. So by that logic, it's actually kind of a laggard in terms of technicals. Um, and then if you take a look at the, and then AYR, a very, very strong name as well uh, on the monthly time frame. but we're only up over, just over 66% off of the lows there at $60. So, I mean, this is kind of what I was talking about at the beginning of the video is a lot of people saying it was outperforming, but it's more of a safer bet, right? You're not going to get, you're not going to become a multimillionaire overnight or, you know, in a year, even on this name, I wouldn't think. Uh, maybe if you got it here at $32 and then it went to $250, I mean, that's only 660%. Uh, so a $1,000 investment into, you know, $6,600, it's not bad. But unless you're throwing in like a hundred grand, you're probably not going to become generational. You know, you're not probably going to have generational wealth from IIPR, right? But it is a safe bet. It's kind of like buying Scott's miracle Grow or something like that, right? But in terms of, yeah, percentage move off of the low, uh, I mean, take a look at CGC, right? Uh, the beat more beaten down, this offered a lot more reward for the risk, right? And then 34 cents all the way up to 192, that was 470% in three months, right? So IIPR in how many months? Eight months is only up 67%, right? So uh, again, it's a little bit more of a safer play and it doesn't offer as much reward because it doesn't have that much risk. The other names have a lot more risk and a lot more reward. So like I said, this is great to see. We want to see more names confirm monthly uptrends. The more names that confirm monthly uptrends, the better. We want to see weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull crosses, which is the first time since the bear market, this brutal multi-year bear market began. And uh, the last time we had a weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross on IIPR was back in summer of 2020. Like I said, the price went from about 32 bucks up to 250. Then we had a bear cross of the weekly EMAs. Then we went to 60 bucks, and then now we're seeing another bull cross. So we have the monthly uptrend, we have our weekly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross, and we have our golden cross. So the more names that do this, the better. It's looking really, really good here into the end of the year and into Q1, Q2. Like I said, tax loss harvesting still going on, and I uh, heard there was some, you know, some rebalancing and things like that um, with regards to institutions. But at the end of the day, uh, this was sort of to be expected, and it's, we're you know, going to have a short month this month, holiday season's rolling around. So enjoy the holiday season. Like I said, I think we're due for some massive news here into Q1 and potentially Q2 in 2024. But hope you have a fantastic evening. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth. And we'll see you again on the next video.